Hi everyone, my name is Tom, I'm a tech chap. Today we'll be looking at two very different kinds of monitor. These two could not be further apart in terms of specification. One a professional display, the other a gaming focused display. So we'll be looking at the questions up between 1080p and 1440p at 27 inches. We'll be looking at TN versus IPS. And finally we'll be looking at the refresh rate of 60 hertz versus 120 hertz to see how important these things are and what they should mean to you. So let's take a look at them. So taking a look at these monitors a bit more closely, on the left we have the Dell U2715H and on the right we have the Asus VG278H. Uh, on the left is an IPS, on the right is a TN, on the left is 1440p, on the right is 1080p, on the left is 60Hz and on the right is 120Hz. Um, at this stage we'll set both monitors to factory default settings and 50% brightness for fair comparison. You can immediately see the colour difference between them. You could argue that the one on the right is actually slightly more accurately white, but in reality the more paper white of the IPS on the Dell is in fact more representative, representative of a natural white. It is in fact just, I think, a cooler blue tint the Aces on the right has. So, uh, but it's, it's quite clear the differences between them. If we change uh, the website, if we go to BBC News, for example, you get a nice uh, red, you can see the difference between the reds and the whites, but also more immediately, you can see the difference between 1080p and 1440p, just how much room you ex extra room you have. If we go back to the desktop, you can see immediately on this background picture that the colors are significantly different. So let's move on to how much extra, extra space you get with a 1440p resolution over 1080p at the same size screen, both being 27 inches. So on the right we start with a Chrome browser, so this is on 1080p at the moment, and if we drag that over to the Dell, which is 1440p, we'll see how much extra space we really do get with that high resolution. I've been living with a 27 inch 1080p monitor for quite a long time now and the step up to 1440p at the same screen size is huge and you just get so much more done. You can have so many more windows open uh, using programs like uh, Adobe uh, Creative Suite and just games generally. You're seeing a lot more and it's, it's not just having more real estate, it's clearer. You're not actually seeing the pixels. I sit about two or three feet from my monitors. You can visibly see the pixels at 1080p. Uh, on a screen this size. So 1080p versus 1440p, it really is 10 points to 1440. It makes so much difference. And if you look at the Metro interface here, you can see it's quite a bit smaller, quite a bit clearer, quite a bit nicer on the uh, on the Dell. And so that resolution really does help out. If we go to Photoshop, and let's just look at this photo here. This is a 1440p photo. You can see that we actually have so much more space to play with and dragging it back to the Asus it feels almost claustrophobic um, you're gonna have to zoom out or scroll and pan um, it you know productivity for productivity reasons you're gaining a lot uh, from a high resolution it's not just a nice thing to have it really does make a difference in everyday life so if we uh, move that back again you can see and also you can see the color difference between the the accurate uh, gray and the uh, cooler, more blue gray of the TN. Now, TNs aren't inherently bad at colors. It's more the case that their viewing angles are atrocious, and so anything off center, you'll, you'll really suffer. So straight on, as we're looking now, it's not too bad um, versus the IPS, but it is certainly not as good. Another program I use is uh, Zara Designer, and again, you can see here, similar to Photoshop and similar to almost all uh, programs you can use that you just get so much extra space on the high resolution monitor which is really nice to have. So if we move on to how this affects gaming and uh, the gaming frame rate we'll be looking at the difference between 1440p res and 1080p res and how it affects frame rate within the game. So we're starting with Armour 3 here. Um, unfortunately Armour 3 is very difficult to get a stable frame rate in any condition. You could probably have it on the lowest settings with everything off at 640 by 480 and you'd still stutter now and then. It's, it's not particularly well optimized, but it is a game I play a lot. It looks really nice and it's something that looks a lot nice on the, on the high res screen. What we have seen is that although it's difficult to get a definite reading, it's about 20 FPS slower on the higher res. Similarly in Far Cry 4 here, which is actually more stable, 
and we can actually get a much clearer look at the frame rate. Again, we're seeing 30 on the 1440p and 50-ish on the 1080p. So that spec bump, uh, that bump up to 1440 is dropping you about 20 frames per second. This is running on a single 780 Ti with 8 gigs of RAM and a i5 2500K. Um, so we're seeing quite a frame rate drop. Uh, 780 Ti is good and we're getting down to 30 frames per second. Moving on to the uh, refresh rate, the Dell only has 60 hertz refresh versus the 120 hertz of the Asus. Now, in this uh, Alien um, test, we can see that the differences between 30 and 60 are noticeable, and again, 60 to 20, 120 is noticeable, but I would, I would argue it's, uh, it's less significant than the jump from 30 to 60. So although at this stage we can see that it's going from 60 to 120 is nice, it's not absolutely, you know, earth-shatteringly different, I would argue. And if we look at the slow-mo video here, you can see that there is a difference. And this is at 10% speed. Uh, but again, I would argue that the difference... It's a diseconomy of scale, essentially. The 60 to 120 is not as important as the 30 to the 60. So these monitors clearly are very different, and they're not, they're not supposed to cater to all audiences. They are focused one direction or the other. The Dell, professional, the, the Asus, gaming. But the question is, at the end, does it matter? Can, do you have to choose between one? I mean, can you have a gaming professional monitor, for example? And yes, I think you can. As we saw between uh, when we looked at the refresh rate, 60 hertz to 120 hertz is noticeable, it's a noticeable improvement, but it's not significant. And in gaming, if to be pushing 120 frames is quite difficult unless you have a very powerful PC, so you're not always going to see it. You might see it more on the desktop, just dragging files and opening folders, but it's not absolutely vital that you have it. Whereas 1440p, especially at this size screen, really does make a difference. You get so much clearer, you're not really actually seeing the pixels from a reasonable viewing distance, and you get so much more space for all your programs. So, in that regard, I don't think the Dell is losing that much to the Asus in terms of gaming prowess. You, as I say, 60 hertz really is fine, and unless you have a super powerful PC, uh, you're not going to be getting those 120 hertz in the most recent games. So that's something to consider. Secondly, uh, IPS versus TN. Well, clearly IPS is better if for color accuracy and um, viewing angles. Um, it does have a higher resp response time, between 2 and 8 millisecond response times. I'm sure there is a difference, but I don't personally see it. Um, it may come up more if you just if it's twitchy Call of Duty style games, but personally, I don't notice it, and therefore it's really not a big deal to be uh, going up to eight mega, uh, milliseconds with the Dell. So uh, this isn't you know go the go for the Asus or go for the Dell. We're looking at the more fundamental questions of 1080p versus 1440p, TN versus IPS, uh, 60 versus 120 uh, hertz refresh. So at the end of the day. I love this Dell, I think it's really nice. I think you don't have to necessarily uh, lose out on a gaming monitor by going for something that's more professional, and the 120Hz is nice, but it's not the end of the world. Um, but coming going forward, in 2015, there are some monitors which proclaim to have the best of all worlds. Uh, the Asus uh, ROG Swift in 2014 came close. It had, the, it had a 1440p, 27 inch, uh, 144 hertz, display but it was TN so it did have fairly crappy viewing angles but this year uh, Asus again is doing the ROG Swift but a 4K version and an IPS but we are going back down to 60 Hz so again it's not the best of both worlds uh, but Acer interestingly Acer is coming up with a monitor in March I believe which does have IPS 140, 144 Hz uh, at uh, 27 inches and is 1440p so that's really one to look out for but the problem here is then great it has everything but the price, and the rumored price is going to be between 600 and 700 pounds, which is sort of eight to 900 dollars. So that could be, that is out of the reach of the vast majority of people, including myself. Something you have to weigh up, but my personal opinion, at the end of the day, you can have a professional monitor and play games on it. You can't use a gaming monitor for professional work because colors are far too, are far too inaccurate. You do have to compromise either way, it's not a perfect world we live in, but it's not too bad, and it's close, and uh, you can do everything you want on a professional one. So, opt for IPS, 
opt for 1440p if you can, and don't worry too much about only having 60 hertz. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you enjoy these videos. I certainly enjoy making them. If you do like them, please press like uh, or even subscribe if you want to be kept up to date with my latest videos. I'm trying to get two or three hours a week uh, in addition to a few articles and guys on my website. So I hope you have a great day and it's been really nice talking to you and we'll see you soon.